Okay, you had a great day? Amen. Amen. I always have a good day on Wednesday, (laughs) especially when it's a long, busy day. You have to keep yourself positive. Um, I hope that the juniors don't get tired of me. They had me all morning and part of the afternoon, and now they have to listen to me, huh? And so, anyways, well, uh, you know, the Israelites' journey uh, from Egypt to Canaan has always uh, fascinated me, and I've learned so many lessons uh, from it, and, and today that's, that's what we're going to be talking about um, as, I, as I share with you from, from the book of Judges. And um, it's, a, it's a book that has many stories, but today we're just going to focus just on one verse, one aspect of it. So before we dive in, let's, um, let's bow our head for prayer. Our Father in heaven, Lord, thank you so much for your love and your compassion toward us. And uh, I pray that may be with us as we study your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, let's go to Judges chapter 2, verse, verse 7. Uh, Judges chapter 2, for those who have um, Bibles. Open your Bibles to Judges chapter 2. And we're going to start in verse 7 all the way to verse 10. And it says here, So the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord which he had done for Israel. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died when he was 110 years old. And they buried him within the border of his inheritance at Timnath, Harris, in the mountains of Ephraim, on the north side of the Mount Geash. Verse 10, when all the generation had been gathered to their fathers... And another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord, nor the work which he had done for them. Now, my question is, how many generations? Because this is a, another generation arose that did not, know, uh, did not know the Lord, nor the work which he had done for Israel. Now, how many generations since Egypt? So you have the generation that left Egypt, right? And then the generation that went through Jordan. That's generation number two. And now generation number what? Three. But what happened with generation number three? Did not know the Lord, nor the work which he had done for Israel. It's interesting that the, this generation forgot what their fathers, forefathers, had seen and suffered. And how quickly we can forget why we are doing what we are doing. A generation that was in the promised land. It's interesting to know because this is what their forefathers, this is what their parents was dreaming for when they left Egypt. Their grandparents, their father, they were dreaming for this. And now they're in the promised land. Now they're living the life. And suddenly they're doing something else. They're not appreciating what God had done for their fathers and for them. So a generation that had everything that their forefathers were longing for, but a generation that didn't know God nor the works which he had done for them. Now, could it be that we are forgetting, forgetting that the Lord, what the Lord has done? How easy it is to forget. Very easy to forget. And let's go in the same story, back a few years, in Exodus chapter 24. And um, Exodus chapter 24 Um, verse 3 it says here so Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments and all the people answered with one voice and said this is one time that the 
children of Israel are actually in and in harmonia, har, har, is a harmonious voice. In harmony, they answer, all that the Lord has said, what? We will do. So now they just made a covenant with the Lord, and they said, all that the Lord has said, we will do. Meaning, you will be our king, you will be everything to us, we will obey you, and we will let you guide us. Now, soon after, verse Chapter 32, if you turn a few pages forward, chapter 32, a very known passage by most of us, it says, verse 1, Now when the people saw that, that, Moses, and what, that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aaron and said to him, Come, make us gods that shall go before us now they just they just made a covenant with the lord and suddenly they are turning away from god now continuing reading verse one uh, come make us gods that shall go before us for us for this moses the men who brought us up out of the land of egypt we do not know what has become of him it's interesting because First, they forget they had forgotten what God has done for them. And second, they are a little bit impatient. You know, it's like, we can't, look, a month has gone by and nothing has happened. We must do something. Now, how many days were Moses on the mount? Forty. So, so I imagine it was 30 days by now. So, verse 2. And Aaron said to them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people broke off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hand, and he fashioned it with an engraving tool and made, us, and made a molten calf. Then they said, this is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. Now, the, the land of Egypt. So Aaron, so verse 5, So when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast unto who? Unto the Lord. So very soon, verse 4. It's interesting the language here. When I was reading this, this is your God. Verse, uh, this is verse 4. At the end of verse 4, I said, This is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. Where do we find that language? That this is your God, God, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. What reminds you? Ten Commandments. Interesting enough, that on the mount, God is telling to Moses, and down here, they're saying we're, they're pretty much replacing God. And in verse 5, then, in verse 5, they are making a feast unto the Lord. They don't say we're making a feast to this image. So very soon, um, very, very, very th uh, 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 soon, did they already had a distortion of worship? So did they already have that? Or who God is? So very soon they, they shifted of who God was, what is worship, and now they're doing something different. It's interesting how easy it is for us to forget. Now, there are two things that we can never forget. And academy, staff, and visitors, there are two things that for me are very, very important in life. And they were the two things that the Israelites forgot. And it was God and parents. God and parents. And this is... So we have God, right? So we can't forget what Christ has done for us at the cross, 
we can't forget about His grace, we can't forget about His love, we always have to remember what God has done for us. And it's interesting, if you never talk to your parents about your childhood, I think you should, because there's many stories that will, will ring in your ear and you will say, you saved me. You know, God saved my life and now I am, I don't know, 15, whatever your age is. You know, because in my case, I remember there were several stories that I can tell you later that I, it would have been a bad, um, I would have been killed, but God saved me. Now, so we can never forget what God has done for us. What about your parents? You know, it's interesting enough, and I'll share this story. Um, my grandfather was, um, he will describe it as, and it's interesting, I don't know, who, who has said, like, by your grandparents and say, hey, grandpa, or however you call them, can you tell us some stories of your childhood? Who has done that? For me, it's just amazing because it, it, it encourages me, right? And my grandfather was telling me this. He, he was telling me, you know, Adner, or Chichi, that's how he calls me. Um, when I was, my, we were after the poor people. So if the poor, so the rich are here, the middle class is here, then the poor is here, and then they, they were under the poor, right? And he said, you know, uh, he, he was telling me, one day I would go to, let's say, I woke up that day, he, he was just telling me some stories, and I would go to the neighbor's uh, sweet potato patch. And uh, I would go to the sweet potato patch and... and um, I say, hey, can I harvest your sweet potato? And the neighbor said, sure. So he went, harvest all the sweet potatoes. And you know what he did next? He went to the owner of the sweet potato patch and put all the sweet potatoes in front of him. So the owner of the sweet potato patch grabbed all the big sweet potatoes, all the nice sweet potatoes, and the little ones, and the one that had bugged in it, that was my grandfather's reward. So then he will bring that home, and um, he, so he will bring that, those sweet potatoes home and uh, cook them. Now, he would ask then his mom, hey, hey mom, so what are we going to eat sweet potatoes with? Well, water. So they eat sweet potatoes with water. And um, so you have some sweet potatoes that are soft, other sweet potatoes that are hard. So he will mix one bite with a soft one, one bite with a hard one, and, you know, it will blend pretty well like that. So, <laughs> anyways, now, my, my grandfather, very hard-working man, worked hard, got a degree, and did a lot of great things. And now my parents, one of my father's, uh, wishes when he was growing up was to eat an egg by himself because my grandmother had to mix one egg for nine of nine of them they didn't have a lot of money they didn't have a lot of things so therefore a big bowl of plantain with one egg mix it up and there you have it and now for me then what is what am I going to do? What am I going to do with those sacrifices that my grandfather did, that my grand, uh, that my mom and my dad did? What am I going to do with them? Am I going to just waste it? Because it's interesting that if you are, for example, climbing a ladder and you're put halfway through it, are you going to continue going up, or are you going to stay, or, or, or are you going to go back? You know, because it's interesting, we don't think about these things, about our parents. And the reason why I believe that the Israelites, 
forgot who God was, it was because they forgot about all the efforts that their parents had gone through. You know, the reason I'm standing here today is because of the work that my grandfather did. It was because the work that my parents did. And as a immigrant, you know, it's, it's a lot of work. I know that some of you may have two or three generations that have been a little bit easy and just, just really riding, you know, just, just, just flying with the wind. But for some, some people had to f- fly against the wind. But the bottom line is that all of you, all of us, have a story. Have a story. Our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents have a story. And I want you to value this, this because, because God wants us to. Because it's interesting that the, what the children of Israel did, they forgot those two things. God and what their parent has done. I know that, you know, whether you believe it or not, I know it is a great privilege for you to be a wage. Because I have seen and I know a lot of people that only wished for them to be here. Millions of kids that they said, man, I only wish, you know, but obviously they can't. So what is it that we're going to do with the opportunities that we have? What is it that we're going to do with the present and what is coming? How easy it is to forget. History is there to testify. God has done marvelous things for us and through our parents. Friend, They're not to forget what God and your parents have done for you. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, is with thankful heart that we come before the throne of grace. Thank you, thanking you, O Lord, for preserving our lives. Thanking you for inspiring our parents, our grandparents, and inspiring everybody that has impacted our lives. Thank you, Lord, for your love and your great sacrifice. Lord, help us to never forget what you have done and what our parents have done for us. Because if we do, We will go in the same tracks, in the same footsteps that the Israelites went through. Lord, give us a good night rest and help us to honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for joining us for our prayer meeting. Feel free to continue praying wherever you may be. If you have been blessed by our program, why not leave a special prayer request or praise report in the comments below and we'll share it with our prayer team. May God be with you.